Luke 23, verse 43. And my topic is the promise. I want to hear you say that, the promise. the promise. When I read the scripture, I try to read it in the context. Because if you just read the line here from Luke 23, 43, it just says, Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. But who was Jesus talking to? Jesus was between two criminals on the cross. I know you heard this before. He was between two criminals on the cross. They called them robbers. They were thieves. Yes, one on the left and one on the right. And there was a crucifixion going on. We know that our father, Jesus, he was being crucified. And even in the midst of that crucifixion, he made a promise to one of the thieves. <laughs> yes, yes, amen. Now imagine. Yes, yes. God still had the mission in mind. And what was his mission? I want to talk about Jesus first because we know our Jesus. Jesus came not to condemn the world. He actually came to save us. He was, he's a savior. And he didn't come to condemn the robber on the cross. So let's look at it from this point of view. There was a conversation going on. So picture this. Jesus, one criminal, two criminal. Jesus in the middle. And one of the criminals were hurling insults at our Jesus. And he was like, let me summarize it for you. He's basically saying, are you the son of man? Save us. And the other one rightfully said and corrected him and say, do you not fear God? <laughs> well, you are under the same condemnation of which we're sentenced to. So, when I think of this, I think about a joint enterprise. Joint enterprise we call in law is when two persons commit a crime or you get charged for the one person who commit the crime just off of the foreseeability that you knew that he was gonna commit a crime. Let me explain it for you. So if I go with Camelia down by the gas station over there and I know that she's gonna commit a robbery, but I still drive my car and I carry you. Then when the police hold us, she's gonna get charged for joint enterprise and I'm gonna get charged for joint enterprise too. So let's come back to the cross. We have two robbers here. And these two robbers regarded as criminals. But look at the mindset. Every time I read the scripture, I look at the mindset of the one that changed. Beloved, my message to you is, Without change, you can't have butterflies. Without change, you can't have butterflies. So I've been to many places and I've heard people use the same scripture and say, yeah, Jesus saved the robber from the cross. So he will save me after I drink all the rum. After I do everything bad, he will save me. But no, there was a hard change in this man. He said, do you not fear God? Yes, 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 yes. So if I see Miss Camilla going down yes. to the gas station and doing something wrong, and I'm about to be saved, he was in the presence of Jesus. And I want to be saved. Wouldn't I take the opportunity? The other criminal didn't care. And that's what I'm saying to you here. Because if you have a connection or a friend that's leading you down a wrong road, I want you to be like the criminal on the cross. and say, do you not? fear God because we have to fear God enough yes, yes. to serve him and he accepted Jesus as king yes. some of us we are resisting yes. we are not accepting the king of kings and the lord of lords but there was something happening there on the cross imagine me being Jesus let me put myself in Jesus place me being Jesus on the cross suffering battered beaten spat on thorns on the head you put me in shame and then you ask me on the cross, Father, remember me when you enter your kingdom. Amen. Jesus' heart was so pure, so pure, that even in the pain, even in being beaten, even in being rejected by some men, 
Yes. Jesus said, yes, he Surely you will be with me in paradise. That's right, that's right, that's right. You see, there's a lot of arguments on whether paradise was heaven. You know, they go out here storing even their paradise beauty. They're wondering, Where is this paradise? But for me, wherever my Jesus go, I will follow. Amen, amen, amen. Whether paradise is a part of heaven that they're arguing about, yes. where my Jesus go, I will follow. Yes. Because beloved, yes. Jesus has come to yes. take the darkness and turn it to light. Yes. Jesus has come yes. to take the brokenness and to make you whole. Yes. Yes. Jesus has come no. to make the disappointment yes. become a divine appointment. Yes. Jesus has come to turn the poverty around for you. Jesus has come to mend the broken heart. And Jesus has come to give you the most important thing. And that is eternal life. Don't wait until last minute like the robber on the cross. Because sometimes we think that we have time put down. And we say next week God. Next time God. And let me tell you something which is profound to me. Yes, amen. It's never too late to serve God. Yes. When I think about those criminals right there, sometimes we beat ourselves up. We think, God, I've done so much different things. Something, it might be some sin of the past that we've allowed to burden us down. That we've allowed the words of men to make us think that we can repent. But Jesus made it clear that I did not come to condemn the world. I came to save the world. I come to save somebody. Even if it's to save you from yourself, from your mindset. From the way that you think God came to save the world. And sometimes we weigh ourselves down that when Jesus is reaching out to us. We can't see his hand reaching. We're distracted. But do you fear God? Do you fear God? I'm going to ask you the question that one criminal turned to Jesus. And I want to picture it. And I'm going to say this morning, do you fear God? Yes, amen. Because Jesus kept his mind on the mission. Let me tell you something. I went to a funeral and I'll never forget what the preacher said. He said, some of us have condemned so many people. We have them to go into hell. Some of them have not done us anything. But because we don't like them, we say, commit them to hell. But that's not our, our jobs to commit people to hell. Because you see what Jesus did? We are like the witnesses of the gospel. But you see what Jesus did? If I was, you know, in real time zone watching the robbers on the cross, I would say, you know, he's gone. He's finished, man. Two criminals. And that's what the, the, the preacher, the funeral was trying to say. That we already have committed some people in hell. We've already given up on some of our family. We've already given up on some of our friends. But God is saying it's not too late to change. Remember what I said this morning. That without change, there wouldn't be butterflies. Even the caterpillar knows. One time I went somewhere and I saw something cook up on a wall. And he said, well, what is that? And somebody said, there's a caterpillar that's about to change. Amen. I said, what? Wow. God is so mysterious. That if you saw it, it had like a white coal on it and it was getting ready to, you know, you would see the beauty to shed and to spread its wings. Yes. But beloved, Jesus loves you so much. Whole night, since Prophet Grant laid hands on me, I, began, I had so many visions of this sermon that I knew I wouldn't need the paper. I had visions after visions. I woke up at four o'clock and I had visions and all God keeps telling me is to make sure that you sing this song. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. And that's the reminder I have for you this morning that Jesus still loves you. When men turn their back on you, Jesus still loves you. Jesus gave you the promise. 
And remember, in order to encounter the promise, what you have to do, beloved, is to have that hard attitude, just as the criminal on the cross. He was about to be executed, but he was correcting one. Sometimes we go down the road, we're, we try to fit in when God is asking us to stand out. Amen. If none of us would stand out, who would spread the gospel? Hey. Who would be up here worshiping? Who would be here playing keyboard? Who would be there preaching? Amen. God is calling you to stand out, to spread the gospel. God allowed the word to be written so that we could remember the man on the cross, not to condemn him, but to use him as an example to say, Lord, it's not too late for me. I want to change my life. Yes. And to remember the mission. And the mission is, do not forget why God has sent you here. God didn't send you here to party. God didn't send you here to work. I'm going to say it again. God didn't just send you on the earth to work. Because sometimes we get so caught up with work. Sometimes we get so caught up with other things. God didn't just send you here to just have children. God sent you here with a purpose, with an assignment. And while you're here, there's going to be a day yes. that your time is coming. Where right. That time will end. And where do we want to go? Yes. And sometimes I have to say, we allow people to change us. Yes. We allow people to make us different. It's true. It's true. true. That's right. We allow people to put stumbling blocks for us so that we abort what God is telling us to do. Amen. Yes. Don't allow anyone to put you, you know, don't allow anyone to put you in a place where you give up your salvation. Because not only is my focus on the one that was saying the right things, my focus is on what happened to the one that didn't change. What happened to the criminal on the cross that did not change? What happened to the criminal that was still hurling insults at Jesus, still not accepting him as the Messiah, still not accepting him as Christ who was sent to save us? Where is he? We think about paradise, but there's another place that you will go outside of paradise, my God. And I don't want to know where that place is, so please, don't take the Bible as if it's just a story, but the criminal had a chance to correct the wrong. Right now, sometimes I've met criminals in my life that would not correct the wrong. We have real offenders here in Barbados who don't want to correct the wrong. They feel good, as Prophet Grant was saying, watch me, I bad. I don't care, I bad. But being bad will not get you to paradise. That's right. And that's my message to you. I don't want to hear that song one more time. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me. So, and once the Bible tells you so, you don't need nobody else to tell you no, no. And that's the word that I leave with you today. Jesus loves you. Amen. Welcome to Mega Prophetic Ministry. We are prophetic. We are apostolic. We are a mega family. Keep me true. Lord Jesus, keep me true, keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true, there is a race I must run, and there are victories to be won, give me power every hour to be true, there is a race Give me power.
Welcome to Mega Prophetic Ministry. We are prophetic. We are apostolic. We are a mega family.